what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm poking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Gang hop out, then we clown What's going on y'all? It's Lauren K. We here at Talk of the Town And who's in the town today? The boy They don't know who the boy is Really, J1, J1, the heart of the north Feel me, Yonkers finest That nigga, that everybody wanna be Any more AKAs? I just gave them all. My shit ain't even AKAs. AKAs is for generic niggas. My shit is just, you feel me? We're comma after comma. I like it. It's, we're starting off hot, guys. We're starting off hot. All right, so we're going to start off with a little game of rapid fire questions just oh, to fuck. get us introduced to the people, okay? So I'm going to ask you, answer as quick as you can, okay? First one, where are you from? Yonkers, New York, the north side, you heard. What's a conspiracy theory you believe in? Damn. You want me to throw some out? Huh? You want me to throw some out? Yeah, we're. Um, Mandela effect. They got a weather machine. Um, New York is sinking. New York is sinking. No, that's a fact. I think that's real. That's I, was real. Say, I don't think that's a conspiracy. This rain puddle's been a little heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't been snowing either. Um, dinosaurs aren't real. The Titanic was fake. The moon landing was fake. That was fake. We know that was fake. Nobody walked on the moon. They just said that so the fucking Russians can't go up there first. Ooh, politics. Word. Okay, so he doesn't believe in the moon landing. Yo, Got nah, it. it's a crazy, it's a conspiracy. I peeped early the other day. I was dumb high. I was on live. What the <laughs> fuck was it? Oh, um, it was political. What's it about? It was like a bo both, but I believe the food got estrogen and shit in it. That's why niggas be out here acting like girls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You can't uh, elaborate or nah, just think. think about it. Like, you feel me? No offense. You feel me? <laughs> like, it's a lot more feminine men out here now. Right. It's a lot more masculine women. Like, you, you don't me? think that has to do with single mothers raising no. men and women? Because my generation of single mothers raising men, them niggas was some thugs. I mean, I was about to huh? say, I don't really think thugs is the no, positive but either. Now, that wasn't positive, but it was like they wasn't feminine. Damn, niggas be having two fam two parents in the home and be sassy as shit. Okay. Well, I mean, y'all, it is hormones in the chicken, so maybe it's estrogen. All right, next question. What's your sign? <laughs> Scorpio. The best sign there is. Mm, it's Aquarius season. I bet it's you not, it. And is, I know my big three, but I... It's big Aquarius season right now. All right, I know my big Thank three, you. but that's cool. It's big Aquarius season. We January don't care. 20th to February 18th. We do care. We don't. Amen. We don't Amen. Care, like... Next. Aquarius isn't even thought of. Who who famous is Aquarius? I, can, I have a list. Thanks give me, for give me, give me two. Carisha. Don't care. Megan yes, we Stallion. do. I do love it. Uh, um, Michael Jordan, Oprah. You said all of the pretty women first. Michael Jordan, Oprah. Michael. Okay, Oprah. Justin Timberlake. That's, we jacking. We jacking. Why? Because Timberlake said so. Um, he made bops. No, I fuck with my son Justin. That's all Aquarius. Who else? Um, that's enough. You told me two, and I gave you like five. Anyway, next. They question. not future. They not Drake. They not word. I just said they, Oprah and Michael Jordan. Uh huh. Okay, that ain't future. That ain't Drake. I mean, I give you Drake, but like future's good. But like I said, Michael Jordan. Who else? Who else we got? Hey, we can have battle of the signs later. It don't even it don't even, They got me. That's all that matters. I love that for them. What's one thing that can get your black card taken away? I don't eat mac and cheese, hot sauce. Um, what else do black shit people do? What else do black shit people do? Um, any movies you ain't seen? I mean, that is nah, one Nah, I'm thing. a movie buff. I ain't gonna front. I watch movies. Like, I, I just be saying random movie lines and shit, hoping people know what I'm talking about. I never would. Okay, next one. What's your biggest pet peeve? I don't call people often, so when I call people and they don't answer, that shit really pisses me the fuck off. I felt that. Like, bad. That's a good one. What's a song that everybody knows the words to that you don't? You need some songs everybody knows the words to? We Are The World. By Michael Jackson? Yeah. I definitely don't know all those words. What's your favorite girl lingo? It's a given. T. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's it's one place? Tea. It's giving Oh, uh, what tea. else? What else? Is a, uh, what else? He's is giving some... us multiple answers, y'all. Nah, because what's so funny? What else y'all be saying? I'd be happy for me. Tears. That's my personal favorite that we say for me. Nah, I don't care for that. You don't like for me? Nah. Um, 
What else we say, y'all? I be saying oops. Oops. Yeah, like oops. <laughs> like if I'm sorry, wait. If messages, wait, okay, stop. If, nah, everybody messages stop. I everybody say stop. that. Like if somebody say some fly shit, I'll be Number like, oops. one, you saying moi is mad funny. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Oops, yeah, I like think if somebody, has been around. Nah, for but a like minute. girls made it like it became like a girl thing. Like, not, Are, do you mean like not, oop or yeah, oops? like yeah, same shit. Oop, oop, same shit. No, I feel like oop is a little girl. Nah, I be a tiz though. Like if somebody tried to go off in the Texas song or like say some flush, I be like oop, oop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, word. <Okay. laughs> like, the next question: What's one place that you would like to live permanently? That's not New York. Washington State. Hmm. Damn, okay, that's interesting. What's the best non curse word insult? In what? Best non curse word insult. In song? Insult. Oh no. Nah, sassy is crazy, mm. but that ain't the best. I don't know. Sassy I might be calling down. somebody a jerk or a Neanderthal. Heavy on Neanderthal. That is crazy. Like Heavy on you see holes. You see when he called them at holes, and he threw the. You ain't see holes. Wait, um, with Shia LaBeouf when he Shia called him you a Neanderthal. That nigga threw the wrench at him. <laughs> I saw it, but I don't remember it. You see, like, not so like I that. told Sorry. you, I'm a movie. I can't hang with you. Yeah, I'm a music girl. I'm not a movie person. Mm. Can't do both. Okay, love that for you, Neanderthal. You love ad libs. Yes. Right. Let's see. I got some ad libs. I wonder if you know what they talking about. Wait, you can't play a game with me. I'm playing games with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Next one. What's your favorite bar from you? I don't know. It's probably from a new unreleased joint. Like the first line is "pandemic over" and I still got a lot of it. Exclusive. Or the niggas is broke. Oh yikes. Okay. And the last one. What's a game that's not a video game that you're really good at? Musical chairs. I love musical chairs. We're going to do one round right now of RPS. I take RPS very seriously. What is RPS? All right, people, listen. All right, back. One. Ready? Oh. I was doing rock, paper, scissors, says. Right, okay, again? Rock, paper, scissors, says, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, says, shoot. Can't fuck with me. Okay, I mean, I, I won the first one, you but okay, didn't. it's fine. It's you fine. was off beat. It's, it's fine. We can get back into it. All yeah. right, so let's start up. You got the one when I won, right? Yes, I won. All right. Like, <laughs> niggas be trying to edit. Okay, so let's start off from the very beginning. What was childhood like for you? Well, you know, grew up with a maid, butler, had a dog. We named him Rover. Like, no fuck it with you. <laughs> like you're so unserious. Like just be a little serious. Like I smoked before I came. I could tell in the elevator. Uh no, nah, um childhood <laughs> for me was real regular. I think it was like how most kids grow up in an urban community, I would say. Um my pops was always on the road, not around a lot. It's just me and my mom's like my grandparents helped out a lot. And then just like going to my cousin's house on the weekend and shit, I just was fly. Like everything Period. else was regular. I just was a fly little nigga. Period. You and your family are close? Depends on what family, man, what you're talking about. Are you family oriented? Maybe that's the better question. No, nah, I'm not a people oriented person. Mm, more by yourself? Got it, got it. Okay, so where does music come into play in your childhood? Were you always doing music? Was it sports for you at first? Like, nah, music been the center of my life forever. Like, I can imagine. Me? That's been the, like even without my pops being who he is. Just like mm -hmm. I just always loved music. My grandmother every Saturday, Sunday, they playing music in the house. Mm -hmm. Family cookouts, family coming over, music playing. Like, so for me, it's just always been music. And have you always wanted to do music, or was it just around and then you grew up and was like, okay, this is what nah, I want to do? I wanted to do music, but I didn't want to do music. I didn't want the extra shit that comes with being music, like the comparisons and all mm. that. Like, okay. I would have been cool with just writing for niggas. Right. Really? Yeah. What type of writer would you have tried to do? Like, you would have tried to be R and B. We go in, like, Ooh. that's a fact. I love that for you. What's one R&B singer you would write for right now? Who do you feel like you would write the best song for? I have Jaheem. He word Jaheem would be that nigga right now. 
I did not expect that. Jaheem would be that nigga right now. That thug love, that thug <laughs> R&B. That's a Over fact. period. So now, you said you always wanted to do music. Now, I know you ended up in school, like college, which you don't necessarily need a degree to do music. So how did you end up in college? And let them know where you went. I went to CAU. Greatest HBCU to, like, word. Know what I mean? Period. Um, how did you end up in school? It was school or do something else, figure out life a little bit faster, and I wasn't trying to do that. And I didn't want to be home, so I was just like, I'm out. I'm going to go to school. So why did you choose Clark? It's Clark, duh. Why would anybody choose Clark? Clark is the greatest HBCU. Like, every HBC mo- HBCU movie you see is at Clark, and it's just a vibe. I mean, they be giving, like, Morehouse and Spelman, too. They just lot. talk about Morehouse. We don't care about neither of those schools, first of all. Oh, wow. They're not even universities. It's not Morehouse University? Those are colleges. They're not even universities. Like, there's levels to this shit. T. I went to a SUNY, so. Oh, yeah, but there's levels to this shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Okay, so what did you go to school for? Psychology. Did you graduate? You know that. Love that for you. Mm-hmm. Now, what were you going to do with your psychology degree? I thought I was going to become a um, psychologist and a professor and all of that, but I ain't take, what's that, that? What's the test you take after you graduate or before you graduate? I got a bachelor's. Uh, well, whatever test you take to get your <laughs> master's, I didn't take that. Mm, okay, and it okay. was just like, got well, it. here we go. Got it. Did you learn any skills in college that you feel like are applicable to the real world and your music career? Find a way to make one. Hmm. CAU motto. CAU, listen, he's doing it for y'all, Clark. He's doing it for Find y'all. a way to make one. Now, one thing that you do outside of music, coffee. Talk to us about the coffee. What you want to know? Everything. How did it start? All right. Who you in business with? All right, What's I'm your in role in it? What's the name of the company, first of all? All right. The name of the company is Kiss Cafe Coffee. Love that. It's three generational. My grandfather, my father, and me. Um, those are my business partners, along with our team over at the compound. Um, Seth Free and his, life, his wife, Liza. How to start? My grandfather always wanted to do something with my father and me, and I wasn't trying to sit oh. in the office. And since he's been doing coffee for like 40 years, it was like, all right, let's do this. Wow. The idea came about after the first verses, though, the one with Fat. Really? Yeah. So this is like fairly new. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, your grandfather was in the coffee business. Wow, 40 years. He was making money for coffee for 40 years. I that guess is fire. So. Really? I think coffee is one of those industries where it's like i would have never even thought to like hey let's make a coffee a coffee line is that what you say coffee a line? coffee brand yeah coffee brand yeah i'm like it's line. a coffee line like, <laughs> that's so interesting okay now what are some skills that you learned maybe participate in, in that business well what's your role in that business actually like a ceo on? and what does that entail everything I had to do all the thinking, mm. make all the calls, calls all the shots, hear all of the complaints. You know. So you're really involved in that, and you do music. How do you juggle it? When I'm stressed, I go to sleep. You have time for that? I have a fine time to go to sleep. Amen. <laughs> I have a fine Amen. time to go to sleep. Heavy on it. Now, what are some skills that you learned being a CEO of the coffee <clears throat> business? Um, that you could apply to the music business or that you do apply to the music business, if any? I don't know. I don't think they actually coincide the same. Like, other than, like, market and stuff, like, just finding the the groups and stuff that see who buys into your stuff the most. But other than that, I don't think it's really anything that you could apply. Okay. So you're just doing a lot every day. Yeah. And you can go to the gym. It's, your day must be heavy. I don't know how you're sleeping. Now, I would be remiss to continue this interview without mentioning who your father is. So tell the people them, who is your father? The people them. The people them. Mm-hmm. Jadakus. <laughs> That's right. Now, you are your separate person, so we're not going to spend too much time on this. But um, what are some struggles, maybe, that the outside eye wouldn't see um, to having a dad that's a celebrity? They ain't never around. 
Like, for the most part, like, the beginning of their career, they never around. So, like, if you born when they first get on, like, they're mm-hmm. never going to be around. You feel me? Got money, but they never around. For the shit that's important, they yeah. never really around for it. That's why I don't got kids right now. Cause I, really? It'd be fucked up if I put a kid in and I'm never around. It'd be like, damn, bro, I get it. I wouldn't put my kid through that. That's so considerate. So do you feel like that affected you or y'all's relationship at all? For a, brief like period of, for a brief period of time, it did. And then after a while, you just as you get older and become older, you'd be like, man. And then you got friends that get kids. You'd be like, yo, it really ain't even that they don't want to be around. They might not know how to really be a parent 100%. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Like, you feel me? Being, have a, being a black dad ain't easy. That shit confusing. You start out on this shit. Wow, that's really understanding. No, it ain't. Now, I know you I mentioned... I don't, I don't understand it at all, but I just deal with it. Oh, so it's kind of like, it's life, this is the punches, I'm rolling with it. Not that you After got. a while, when, once you get older as a man, you just be like, all right, you feel me? But I think that's understanding. Like, now, the fact that you could even look at that like that and look at your dad as like a person instead of just your dad. Like, he was a person with life going on. That's really understanding. You don't think so? I don't think he's saying that, like, he okay with it. I think he's just like, I get it. I don't think being yeah, okay like, with yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, just like, I, But I don't think being okay with it is synonymous with understanding it. I can understand your point of view and still disagree with it. Yeah. I just understand why you did what you did. <sighs> no, I don't know. I can't even. No, I can't even say that because now, like you see, now like a lot of artists that got kids and all of that, you'll see them bringing their kids with them to shows and stuff. Or mm-hmm. so it's like it's really just a matter of, I guess, the time period, and then just mm-hmm. like That's it's so a true. learning experience. Okay. Now you mentioned earlier you didn't want to get into the music too much because of the comparisons. How do you deal with that? Right now. I just told I could say it hey, I just told him on the Gilly and Wallow joint, like I'ma walk on him when we do a song together. So just walk on him. You think you're a better rapper than your dad? I think I'ma walk on him. Do you think you're a better rapper? I think I'ma walk on him. And if that makes people think that I'm a better rapper, then that's what it is. But I think I'ma walk on him. Okay, so right now, being that y'all didn't make the song, do you feel like you're a better rapper than your dad? Or do you feel like you can't tell because you haven't walked on him? Yet? I feel like Put that beat on, and we going to see who say what. Mm, that's T. Kobe, set it up. Make it a talk of the town exclusive. Okay. You thought you could walk on him because he's been rapping, and you like, I don't know. But you got him tricked. No, I just feel like that's just me. Like, I just feel like I know what to expect with him. Like, mm. his approach, his demeanor, all of that. It's just like. And you don't think he know that about you? No. I know he don't. Really? Why? You don't, you don't know the, Don't nobody know how I'm ever gonna approach a song. Mm. You don't think that him having rapper brain and him knowing his son? No. <laughs> so what advantage do you feel like you have over him that he doesn't have over you? And like, how do you know that I'm he's gonna, gonna approach, approach that way? the record? However, I see fit. I'm not thinking about him. I feel like he's going to have more going on in his head. Like, damn, that's my son. I can't leave him. I can't let him get the one up. I can't do this. Like, like me, I'm just be like, however I would record the verse with somebody that ain't him is how I'm going to record it with him, and that's it. Period. Now, what are some aspects of your dad that you see in yourself now that you're older? Like, you're like, you know? If any at all, y'all could be polar opposites. No, we don't simil- I don't know. You have to ask somebody around me. Like, I think we got similarities, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Table it. Come back to us. Yeah. Part two. Period. Now, last thing about him. You know your dad is Mr. Top 5 Dead or Alive. So I got to ask you, who's your Top 5 Dead or Alive? No Order, J. Cole, Nas, Chady Kiss. And my last two switches are Ram. Okay. Like, it switches around. Like, it can fluctuate. But right now in it, it's Kanye. I don't want it to sound too New York. I mean, that's you, though. No, nah, it's like styles. It, it switches. My last two switches. Like, some days it might be Nip. Some days it might be Dom Kennedy. Hmm. It might be. I don't like doing top fives all around. Like, I, need, I be needing my shit to be based on region or, like, state. Like, mm. Cause, or 
The fact that you said Kanye is really interesting to me because Kanye don't write all his stuff. But Kanye has wrote for niggas. And it's been proven that Kanye can write for niggas. And, and you Kanye is like, a he's a musical genius. And I also don't feel like Kanye ever claimed to be the best rapper. He always claimed to be, I'm the best at what I do. I totally agree. But I also think that that's what separates like just a rapper from an artist. No, but Kanye loves music. Like, that's a lot of niggas' problem. A lot of niggas don't be fans of this shit. Some niggas just rap because they can rap. Like, Kanye's a fan. He's a mm -hmm. student of, the, of music. Like, niggas don't be fans. Like... Kanye never said, yo, I'm the best rapper. If he ever proclaimed to be the best rapper, he would never let nobody write for him. Feel me? Like That's, that's so why true. niggas can't fuck with Cole. Cole say what he say, and it's just like, he's proving it. We're going to argue, exactly. Yeah, like he's proving it. Like You feel me? Do you well, think you're the best rapper? Yeah, I don't think nobody could fuck with me in my age group. And even a little older. Mm. So what makes you the best? Of your... They can't fuck with me. Put us in the room with the same beat, the same amount of time, the mm -hmm. same amount of bars. These mm -hmm. niggas cannot fuck with me. Hmm. Signed, like unsigned, up and coming. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I wouldn't even put you on a spot like that. That was crazy. No, nah, I'm just tired of freestyle. <laughs> now, you know what it is? Nah, but even then, like, because a nigga could come up with a 16 and be like, that was a hard 16. But then, like, you put a nigga in a booth with, like, niggas be panicking. Niggas don't be knowing what to do. Niggas don't be comfortable. Niggas be, they might have said this shit twice already on a song. Like, niggas. Definitely a lot of repeating going on right now. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot of repeating the music. Guys, sounds like a challenge to me. If you think you push your pen, come push your pen against him. Word. Whoa, pause. We do the lockout sessions every month. You Ooh. think you got word. Pull up. We going to see who do what. Period. Now, talking about recording, what is your creative process like? What do you like in a studio? What's your perfect ambiance? My perfect create writing session for me is driving around the city. Okay. Getting high. I got to roll up while writing. Like, while writing. not smoking. Like, I, the act of me rolling up and writing, it works for me. Like, I got, it's just something, like, okay. it keeps me focused. I got to roll up while writing. Um... Do you beat physically that, write? Sorry, nah, I, I'm, I'm, I got neat ass handwriting and one mess up, I'm going to erase the whole shit and start mm. over. So I can't physically write. It'll piss me off. Mm. Like, um, You one of those. Yeah. Got it. Um, I got to be rolling up, driving, like the music got it, the radio. You know how sometimes your speakers might not want to go to their full loudest potential? Like my shit got to be booming. Okay. You feel me? You got to be light on the traffic. And just cooling, like even if it's a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic is better because I ain't got to move that much. I okay. ain't got to drive that much. Um, I might jump back and forth between two songs because I might come up with a ball on one beat and be like, "Nah, I sound better over here." Um, Damn, that's a skill. How you gonna get mixed up? Different concepts, different tones, different everything for each song. Hmm. But like as a lately, like. We just did the lockout session. What I think I freestyled most of the records that I did in there. I just freestyled them shits, coming up with them in the booth in my head. Um, if I'm doing a song with somebody, I like to do it with them or I send it back. Okay, so now you've driven, you rolled up, music was blasting, now you at the studio. What is your recording process like? Yo, Rashad, load the beat up. He load the beat up. Make sure I can hear myself. Make sure you can hear me. Let's go. Hmm. Do you like a lot of people in the studio or just you, engineer? For my own sessions, I like it to be calm, mm -hmm. clean. I don't really like too much. I need some red wine. I need the hookah. I okay. just realized I can't smoke weed while recording because then I get lazy. You feel me? So Self-awareness. Yeah, so I don't smoke in the studio no more. Um... But if it's a lot of people in it, like I'm doing a song with somebody, it's a dog fight. It's a different, it's a different, what you call it, that kicks in. Hmm, interesting. So now let's talk about Heart of the North. Mm -hmm. That is his project. It is out. If you haven't go streamed it, That's if you fact. haven't streamed it yet, go stream it. Now. Um, right now. How is the reception to Heart of the North, fam? 
Yo, it's crazy. A lot of people been going back to it. Like ever since I've been going viral, viral a lot more people been going mm-hmm. back and listening to it. It's been crazy. I had somebody come up to me not too long ago in Harlem, like, "Yo, you really about to blow up?" Like, and it was a Aww. girl too. Like she like, like you one of my favorite artists. Can I get a picture? And I was just like, Aww. "Yeah." So uh, it been it been good. What's your favorite song on the project? It might be "We Still Us." Does it change? Huh? Does it change? No, nah, not really. Hmm. Okay, why is that your favorite song? I was in a great space when I wrote that song. I was like, I'm in a great space now, but when I wrote that at that time, I was just in the, I just was on some other shit. I ain't gonna lie. It's so interesting to me to hear artists' favorite songs of theirs and like why, because it'd be so different from like the consumer. But now I don't really be having favorite songs. Okay. Now it would just be like, before I used to hold on to records and that's why it'd be my favorite, but now it's just like, nah, I want some new shit. Now, I heard in an interview that it was supposed to be called No Park in Calabasas. No Park in Calabasas. Why did you change it? The tone didn't match the title. Okay. And because you made Heart of the North the title, why isn't that the title track? That was the last song I recorded. We ain't mixed it or nothing. I just recorded really? it and just like, yo, that's going on the tape. I uploaded it. So up until the point that you made that song, it was No Park in Calabasas? No. No Or did you change it No, the title was done. The song, um, the title track came, I recorded that like a week, two weeks before the tape was coming out. And Mm. just was like, the way I I structured the hook, I was like, this is going to be the title track and this is going on the tape. Now you mentioned you like to collab in person. Mm Mm-hmm. What is the difference between collabing in person and collab like just sending it for you personally? I like having real deep conversations before we work. Like, you feel okay, me? I want to know why you said certain shit, how you view certain shit, how you feel about certain shit. So that way, you feel me? Then afterwards, I could just go. I could read off the energy if I might want to diss you mm-hmm. in a verse, or if like I'm gonna be embracive in my verse. Hmm. Now, if you diss them, you gonna let them hear this before they yeah, do, do the verse right there. Okay, and so if they read the room, the lines, and be like, "Oh wow, that was at me." Like, but other than that, we just be like, nine out of ten times, most of the people I collab with is like, we end up, we fuck with each other, we got okay. a relationship prior to, but like, okay, anybody else, like, you recently collab with Capella, a small boy. I think shout out to Capella. You and Capella just make so like sonically the energy that just makes you know so why? much sense. Cause we be in the studio for dumb long, like watching interviews, talking about the shit we like, don't like. Like we be having real life conversations. So you have a real relationship. Yeah, and then we go, and I knew Capella for a minute before. I wish we call it before we worked together, like, and we always be like, yo, we gonna get in the studio, we gonna get up. Like I had his number for dumb long, he had my number. Mm-hmm. Then one day I think it was. Thanksgiving, not just past 2023, mm-hmm. we both was at a party, and a mutual friend of ours, T-Mac, was like, yo, what's up? Y'all niggas playing. Y'all gonna get in the studio. And one, another mutual friend of ours was my son, G, he a producer also. He was mm-hmm. like, yo, y'all niggas keep playing. What y'all gonna do? And a few days after that, Capella hit me. and was like, yo, come to the studio. Ooh, ooh. And then we just been doing shit, knocking shit out ever since. Now, this is the Christmas song you're talking about. That was the first song we knocked out. Soon as, yeah, okay. I was asleep. He woke me up. It was like one in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. He woke me up like one in the afternoon, and I fucking went straight to his crib and knocked it out. Okay. So, is there more in the tuck? Yeah. Because I was going to ask, we like we need something other than Christmas. I mean, the Christmas song was amazing. Yeah, yeah we got some shit. But we need tuck. like- we got, some, we got some shit. We got some shit. We got some shit. Okay. I love that. Now, one thing that made me put you and Capella together was- so Hold on. Let me go because I want to read it verbatim. I don't want to mess it up. So, in my world, you said, you can't dance at every party, but I'm clubbing. And don't need to know. You were talking about like your target audience. You make music for fly niggas that want to have a good time. Mm-hmm. I feel like Capella does the same thing. Yeah, we make music for niggas who like women. These oh. niggas don't like women, bro. <laughs> these niggas don't like women. I don't care how much they make it seem like it. These niggas do not like women. So what they like? They like to masturbate with women. Yeah, like they like they like they like to have sex with women, but they and don't then tell like other women. Men that they have it. Yeah, like they don't like women. These niggas don't really like women for real. These niggas, these niggas like the idea of women, like. You ate that. Period. That was team. Now. Clocked it. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> you like that one too? Clocked it. <laughs> You Shout out to foot. Nikki. You on your good foot for a fact. Period. See, come on. We're not going to do that. Don't Sorry. do that. Too far. Got it. <laughs> All right. So, now, how do you feel about like the frequency of music in the club right now? Given it, like you said, fly niggas like women, like to party. How do you feel about it? Because I feel like right now, actually, not so much end of 2023 or like 2023, 2024, but like just there was a period where music was getting very slow. And now, you know, the club is it was slow. Like, I feel like the only niggas thing not really busting a move. They I feel just, like the only thing that sped the music up was um, Jersey? rocking the hips. Yeah. I totally agree. Rocking your hips. But I feel like um, even because Gallus wasn't a fast record, it just was a song you could. You can yeah. move to, like, you feel me? Um, I feel like music went from music you can move to to just music you could just knock right. your head to, like, you feel me? Like, right. I feel like right now, it's getting back to moving, like, you feel me? Because now you need music to feel good. The height of the pandemic, mm -hmm. niggas had money. Niggas wasn't trying to dance. Niggas just wanted to sit there in front in the club. <laughs> now niggas is broke. Now niggas listening. Niggas is listening to some hard music, like my nigga Rod <laughs> Wave, thinking depressed and shit. And, or niggas need some shit to make a move to shake the depression. That's right. So you be in the club dancing? Nah, I'm a grown ass man. <laughs> you know, I be in the club dancing. I might two step. You feel me? I might word, but that's it. I'm gonna keep it real simple, real cute. So you don't make music for yourself to dance to? No, nah, I make music for everybody else to dance to. I'm going to gas mm -hmm. you up. I'm going to so shine a light on them. I'm so you're part of the them. problem. No, because I'll dance. Like, if it's an R&B party or something, I'll get on the dance floor and cut a rug. Like, niggas don't, <laughs> niggas do not want no smoke with me. You feel okay. me? But I'm just not, nah, you got to read the room. Okay, respectfully. But I go to a party and everybody dancing, I'm on the dance floor. That's a fact. Love that. When so I you're learned, not just standing When I learned it to pool. me, your shit, niggas, your shit is blown. Oh, I could teach you right after this interview. <laughs> Nigga shit is blown. I could teach you right after this nah, interview. That shit fire. Right it's too cold to be trying to learn that shit. You know, you got to be warm. We going to put that heat right back on. Oh. We cold for y'all right Listen. now. We're freezing for y'all right now. Freezing. Best interview. Period. Four words. All right. Now, that was just one thing that you said on a podcast. I do know you're very into the podcast. You love to state your musical opinions. So, I want to talk about some of those musical opinions and some of those podcasts. <laughs> now, the first one... I Joe Budden is one of my besties in my head. Love him. So one of good Joe. You said you feel like Flip's addition to the podcast is fake unnecessary. I do. And I stand on that. Why? I stand on that. What has he brought to the Joe Budden podcast? Energy. What energy? I feel like now. Uh, my fault. I mean, no, go right? ahead. Look. It's your world. Rory and Maul left. Cool. Boom. Right. We seen Joker still do it. He bought Ice and Ishin. Right. They both, they all three of them bring different opinions. Joe's gonna bring that outlandish, like, yo, he said that opinion, okay. but he's gonna have an argument to back his statement. Okay. Ish is gonna come real, you feel me, hands in the pocket of his hoodie, <laughs> moving like like almost a condescending undertone. You feel me? He's not really gonna agree with Joe much. So you got the you got the opposing energy. You don't think they agree? No, hold on, hold on. Look, you got the opposing energy, and then you got Ice, who's gonna sit there and Google the facts and pull shit up. Okay. Like you feel me? Okay. What the fuck did we need flip for? Cause he just saying shit that like you got them friends like you know niggas who having a serious conversation, mm -hmm. and then the nigga who say some outlandish shit, and they might be on point one time. Then like he's like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Yeah. Don't do flip like that. He is. He's not like Shaggy. Bro, nah, not for nothing. Like, look, all jokes aside, right? And it's no offense to no, because get your money. You feel me? You in a better position. Get your money. I respect that, right? I was going to say, I want to speak on his behalf because I Now, look, nah, you get money, right? But mm -hmm. look how, how he came in. He came in making skits. We never right? took him serious. Why the fuck we about to take you serious now in regards to music or anything culture related? Huh? Um, Because I think he still is in the culture and aware of the culture. Where? But do we care about No. Okay. I think that Flip made us care about his opinion. Have. I think that when he got there, I can understand what you said. But here's my no. thing. No, no, no. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. Here's my thing. You said, what did he do for the podcast? So this is what I think he did. Number one, number one, I think Flip loves to, to gain knowledge. So he likes to ask questions. I think sometimes Flip asks questions that the whole room may assume everybody knows, but a viewer may not. That's number one. Number two, 
Number two, I feel like Joe, when it was Ice and Ish, even when it was Rory and Moe, was the energy. He is. He don't got to get up and do all the rah-rah. He don't got to shoot at niggas all the time because he has another nigga that's going to do it. Time out. Flip not going to do that. So flip the crash out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> crash out. <laughs> Like, Flip, not, Flip don't do that though. Flip is very, he's very peculiar with his wording and okay. what he says. He do not, fuck it, this is how he feel. He doesn't do that. He he plays with the line of, eh, like, he don't do, I'm going to come clean. I think it depends on the person. No, I'm going to come clean. I'm going to tell you exactly who really the wildest. Melissa Ford. She say the craziest shit on it. But they dog pop. She's a she's the only woman on the they show. They don't let with her speak, bro. She don't not for nothing. I ain't saying she don't know nothing about the culture, but <laughs> like that sounds mad crazy. That sounded mad crazy. That lost me. I just said I'm not saying <laughs> she don't. Me. Have we seen Melissa Ford prior to her being on featured on here? Have we seen her doing any like podcasting or media work? Yeah, she was with um Jason Lee. They had a podcast, and she used to be um. I don't know the show, but she used to be like a, a personality for BT. For who? BT. BT ain't been hot since 106. Okay. What you asked was, have I seen her work prior? Nah. That was her work prior. All right. Let me not say that because BT's still lit. All right. But have, have we seen her? Have we seen, <laughs> have we seen her or Flip in the capacity of like... How we seen Joe Buttons. Like, you get what I'm saying? Definitely no, but also we never seen Ice and Ish in that capacity. No, and we have. We seen them via Twitter. Ice, they not were, Ish. No, they, Ice and Ish, yes, they both was. They Ish both was. Ish was not known. Ish wasn't was. like that. that. Ice, Ish had a little name. Ice, I'll give you Ice. Ice was, a, Ice was a, he had a personality. We just didn't know what he looked like. So that worked. But also, you can have a personality online and not in person. I know plenty of niggas on Facebook with personalities that are born in person. All I'm saying is, you feel me? Like I said, Flip, get your money. Melissa Ford, get your money. What has Flip brought to the show? I told you, I think energy. I think you, what she said. You just saying he the crash out. I so don't think he's the crash you out. You think he the crash no, out? No, I'm not saying he does. He. And we're going to move on to your next opinion. She said he's this. the crash we're not gonna, out. No, I didn't. I'm just saying, Joe don't have to have the, like, he doesn't have to have the show on his back. He I'm don't have clean to. With you. you know why he had the show on his back? The only person before that would challenge him was Rory. Marla just sit there, like, just wow, cool. Like, he was Teddy Rucks on Black Ink Crew. Like, he didn't bring no life to it. Do you watch New Rory anymore? I'm not a fan. You know why? Because mm -hmm. all they viral clips is them talking about Joe. That's not true. That they is a just, fact. They just the only had other a viral clip. clip is him saying he paid, he took a joint to a spot, and then he was there, and he seen her there with another nigga, and he paid for the bill. That was not P at all. No, that's not even how that story went, though. That I mean, is I'm exactly not, how no, it went. No, it's not. That was his friend. It wasn't his friend. It was a joint for. that he took out before. Whatever. Whatever. We're going to circle back to this because we don't, we're not going to make this the JBP, the podcast about the Shout JBP. out Joe. Shout out Ish, Shout out Ice. Heavy shout out Melissa that. Ford. Uh -huh. And shout out Flip. And shout out Parks. Don't do that. Shout out Parks too. Yeah. Period. Like Why Parks ain't get a bigger seat? I think Parks is okay manning the, the equipment. And he don't mean it though. Voice. He just. Yes, he do. He's an engineer. He does mean it. But yeah. why he didn't get a bigger seat? I feel like Parks could have got a bigger seat. Because he's okay, he being behind the scenes, manning the the equipment. Park should have got a bigger seat. He, he's Team Parks, y'all. Okay. I am Team Parks. <laughs> Next, you said, um, somebody asked you about Biggie and Ice Cube, and he was like, can't really compare them. And somebody compared you to, or tried to compare you to King Combs, and he was like, can't really compare us because two different styles. Why do you feel like those two people can't be compared? Who, Biggie and... Ice Cube. Big and Ice Cube. Or you and Christian Cole. Because I, I feel like it's over. Ice Cube could be compared because they just different. They different. They different. What should we call it? They come from different backgrounds. Um... Okay, so not like you and Christian Cone specifically or Biggie and Ice Cube specifically. The more music. just like, yeah, like why can't we compare the artistry of two people in the same field? All right, so for me, so how I look at it, mm -hmm. Biggie, what he died at 24, he only had two albums, like three or so, like mm -hmm. you feel me? His music 
just gradually grew from where it went. Ice Cube music grew from the NWA to him with West Coast Connection and the songs they was making, which was like commercial records. But in my opinion, they weren't true. What we know, what, what I'm a fan of Ice Cube for is because of NWA Ice Cube, Lynch Mob Ice Cube. When he went West Side Connection, like in mm -hmm. certain songs, like Don't Stop, Get It, Get It. Right. I, that ain't Ice Cube to it's me. I don't know that Ice Cube. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel me? Like, so I think that's why you couldn't compare. It's like big, you gonna hit, even in his, what you would say, like fun bop type songs, mm -hmm. it would still sound like big. Like, Player's Anthem still sounds like big. Okay. Get what I'm saying? Okay. So I don't think you compare him. I think Ice Cube, he found a way to market himself to a different audience. Like, be, but he had time to do it. Ice Cube came out in the 80s. And he's still thriving as an artist, inter entertainer, and entrepreneur now. Like, you feel me? So I just feel like you can't compare those two in that aspect. Because one, I don't think Big would have made a record like that. Like, Big wouldn't have joined another group. Like, you feel me? And there's nothing wrong with him joining West Side Connections. But Big would have just always been Big or Biggie Smalls and Junior Mafia. You right. feel me? Hmm. Okay. Um. Next opinion. You said you feel like J.D. Kiss doesn't get his just due. He don't. Why not? Or why do you feel that he doesn't? He started a lot of shit in this game that niggas just overlook it. Like, but every rapper, his verse on Blackout is the reason niggas start talking money, buku money shit. Niggas wasn't talking buku money shit before that. Like mm -hmm. that, a lot of niggas look up to him. Like the mm -hmm. great, like niggas you wouldn't think look up to him. Look up to him. Like you feel me? Listen to him. Fucking. You don't think people give him his props? No. Though? Really? Because every don't. rapper, rapper I've you know spoken why I don't? to Cause mentions him. Even look at the fucking, all these lists. They put him 34, 35. Like, it, he better than mad niggas living all love. Mm -hmm. Some of the niggas, niggas be thinking is them niggas. He better than by a long shot. And this ain't me saying it as a son. This is me saying it as a fan. Right. He will dog walk a lot of niggas. I just walk him down. That aside... So, who are some more artists that you feel like don't get their just to? The game. Niggas be mm. playing with the game. Stop playing with the game. My nigga Ray J. Ray J, I hit it first? Yeah, the original blood. That's such a good bop. Um, who else? Dom Kennedy. Okay. My nigga Uzi. Uzi could really rap on a low. Niggas don't know that Uzi really could rap his ass off. Um... What defines somebody that could rap to you? Where they saying some shit. Where they saying something you could learn from. Or they saying some real shit. Like, you feel me? Like, like Eminem could rap his ass right. off. Right. Well, I don't think there's an Eminem record that I've heard where I learned something from, like, a life lesson. Okay. Essentially. Like, you get what I'm saying? Okay. He just rap mad crazy shit and put it together. It's like, yo, how the fuck he do that? Like, But he... Talks about his mom and no, drugs and he talk that. about those. Those, he, those are relatable records. He, okay. I've never heard an Eminem record with like a uh, twenty two twos where he taught me something or like mm. you get what I'm saying. Like uh, imaginary players, like certain records, like we know from certain artists where they teach you something. Like mm -hmm. you get, I haven't got one of those from him, in my opinion. Hmm. But some of my favorite Eminem songs, he was rapping his ass off, like. Like toy soldiers and shit like that is crazy because he's he's talking crazy. Right. But he just hasn't given me one of them. Like, nah, what the fuck? Like he hasn't given me a teacher moment. Okay. Now on the flip side, what makes somebody trash? You know these niggas is trash. I don't know anything. What makes somebody trash? <laughs> <laughs> they not saying nothing. They. Only stuck in one pocket. They only could do something one type of way. Just, nigga might flow his ass off. But when you sit and listen to it, it's like, oh, what the fuck? Like, what was that? Like, mm. they just be saying a bunch of shit. It's a lot of artists. I could give you examples. I ain't going to do that on I was here. Because I'm fans of them. But they don't be saying <laughs> shit. Like, so you could still be a fan of someone that's trash. Yeah. they Because there's some niggas that's trash, which you could learn some shit from what they said. I would love to hear an example, but I'm not going to do that. So Give you an example when the camera goes Exactly, off. exactly, exactly. All right, so I want to talk to a rapper about rap beef. So, you know, the whole Megan Nikki thing. Ah. So I just want to know, as a rapper, do you feel like there are parameters in rap beef? No. Especially as Jada Kiss' son. 
No, I don't think there's no parameters. There's no parameters, but I feel like consciously we be saying like, you might say that's too far. What's this certain shit you wouldn't say? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's also contradicting, right? Because like I'm guessing you're alluding to her mentioning her mom or whatever, right? God bless the dead. I mean, with all the, the drip, look with all the drip, or like with the reference to Nikki's family, right? With right. all of the drill rap that's going on, right? Them niggas saying fuck everybody, fuck your dead. They smoking on this, that, and everybody says that's fucked up. But now let's go to hip hop. Niggas is saying she didn't go too far. She mentioned this. She mentioned that. When Drake and Pusha was beefing, it was, he went too far. He didn't say that. It's like, I feel like, and this is why fans are dangerous. Mm. Your fans, your cult core fan base, mm-hmm. a pick and choose what is acceptable to say or what isn't acceptable to say. Like, mm. you feel me? Like, Hove told Nas he left condoms in a baby seat. Like, Hove, the whole family said he was wilding. Like, you feel me? His mom said, we've right. seen that. Like, right. Hove went on the radio and said his mom made him apologize for that. Like, you feel mm-hmm. me? So, I really feel like it just all boils down to the person and what their morals and belief is. I'm going to come clean. I might have not said some of the things that were said. Mm-hmm. Shit, I might have said them, depending on what, depending on how you make me feel, right. depending on where I'm going to take it. So, right. you feel me? It's just... A matter of I now I do think you could say something, you could say some crazy shit, but it's how far you take it. Like you feel me? Like, hmm. like you get what I'm saying? Okay. I think. You feel me? My man Jim Jones told Nas he gonna smack his kufi off. Like that's a religious garment you told yeah. him he gonna smack off. Yeah. But then what Max said, like you feel me, they'll probably never recover from. Right. Like you feel me? So it's just it's really a matter of what a person could digest too. Everybody can't handle a person saying something to them, but they could say some crazy shit. Right. I'm just a firm believer. If you could dish it, you got to be able to take the, take it as well. That's you a fact. Have you on that? So if anybody want to diss me, just know I'm not <laughs> holding back. I don't give a fuck who it is, what you say. It ain't nothing. My mother could tell me. Jada Kiss could tell me. Fucking my grandmothers could tell me grandfather nothing like you feel me so you cross that line I'm gonna jump over that motherfucker you ate that <laughs> like, I'm gonna <laughs> jump over that shit okay period so on a lighter note we're gonna play one last game because I feel like you know a lot of facts you know a lot of songs so this is music library so I want you to tell me what song you're gonna play in each scenario okay right. first one you just landed at your vacation destination. What song you playing? What's the season? Winter, cause you live in New York. Winter, vacation destination. It might be, it might be somewhere hot, but I right. know it's still winter back home. Right. So I might just play whatever's currently knocking on the radio. I might play a little baby record or something. Okay, okay. A little baby record with a little baby record. I might play global. Global. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I might play global. Ooh, I might have to use <laughs> I might that play next global, one. Like, you ate that. Yeah, I'm gonna play global. Okay, but I you like can only that. play that if you're going out the country. I am. All right, but you can play that. Period. All right, not him giving me rules. Okay, the next one. You're about to clean up. You're about to clean the crib. I'm gonna play some old '70s, '80s R&B. I might play that "Curious" by Midnight Star. I think it's that. I, 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 I. <laughs> Ooh, that's my shit. Quick sidebar, you know what I've been listening to when I get hot lately? Oh. What You Gonna Do For Me by Shaka Khan. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That and Square Biz by Tina Marie are my go-to Square Biz is my shit. Square, mm-hmm. Square, Square. She ate yeah. that. Period. I ain't gonna front Snoop in the East Side. This version from Baby Boy is fire, though. Ooh, I don't know. That, that. real crib shit is crazy. I don't. I told go you, listen I'm to that. Go black listen movies? to that. I'm t- I'm telling you, go listen to that. Okay. I think it's just talking that buku blue shit. Okay, you tell me the scenarios and then you tell me what song you're playing. We leaving the club if I'm going to the afties. Mm-hmm. I might play Bent. Oh, nah. I might play Brush Him. I might need Brush Him. If I'm Ooh, driving, I, I might play Brush Him. Mm-hmm. You was listening to Brush Him in the shower? Like, On the way to work. Thug. Please. Fucking hoodlum. <laughs> God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> 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 oh, I might listen to Last Last. 
You Ooh, feel me? Okay. You about to go to the crib with wifey or something, or you got a little vibe. Mm-hmm. Might play on some R and B, set the tone. Long as there ain't nobody else in the car with y'all. Mm. Um. The word. That's I was gonna say those really the only two, only two places you well, going. The word. Yeah. All right. The next one. You want a way to pick up some money? I'm going to pick up some money. It might depend on what I got the money for. If it's a back end for a show or something, I might just. Feel me something that feel good. I might, yeah, I might play some Jeezy or something. Mm. I might play some Jeezy. I might, I told you, it depend on the scenario. Going to pick up some money, depend, if it's for some music shit, I might listen to that Jeezy um, put on or Jeezy don't do it. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you feel me? I might, or a Trap Star. I might take it there. Mm. Okay. Next one. You just found out you got cheated on. I think about you shipping real, my nigga. <laughs> Yo, why are you singing? That's I'm trying to tell you, what Hey, Boogie is really DTE like for New life. York niggas. Word, I might play that, or I might play the original one. Should have told me you had a seed. Yeah, I might take Why it. Why you sound there. like him? Uh, uh, hey, Boogie. Yo, I, I got a mean Boogie man. impersonation. Ten oh, seconds. Go. Five, yeah. six, seven, eight. <laughs> Yo, yeah. yeah, what song is that? Um, fucking, I'm a private G5 flying nigga. <laughs> That's my shit, yo. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. That's my shit. The voice is frying yo, me. That is my shit. Nigga said, I'm a private G. What do you say? I'm a private G5 nigga. Invite me. Yo, that's yo, I swear to God. That is my shit like, in the car. Be, that's, so you, when you saying, hey, Boogie, you do the voice. God, I will, yo, I swear to God. I love that for you. Hey, Boogie, reach out to this man. Please that's my, make a hit. Yo, that is some funny shit. Okay, the next one. A song that represents your college career. I'm a boss. Me, mm-hmm. man. Okay. You want to feel motivated. Motivated, like I'm, like I feel I'm down on my dick at the moment. Trap star by Lil Baby, like down on my dick, like (laughs) fucked up, bro. Trap star by Lil Baby. Okay, (laughs) you're shopping. You never heard that? No, no, never. Oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I ain't never heard nobody down on their dick. You heard that before, right, Monty? You ain't never heard the phrase like (laughs) nigga down on his dick. I don't want a nigga to say that to me. Come on, you heard that before, dog. Happy order. Don't be down on your dick around me. Okay, the next one. You about to go shopping. I might play some cool calm shit. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Some cool. I might play some Dom Kennedy. I might listen to some beats. Hmm. Mm. Word, I'm probably gonna listen to beats and write. Wow. Word. Hmm, that's interesting. Especially, like, hearing your music. I could see that. Okay, cool. Um, Somebody tells you to play Really J. Wan's best song. Released. I'm asking what mood they in. Well, they it's your world. They living in it. They just want you to play what you think your best song is. That's release. Yeah, just so that they could go stream it. I feel like it depends on the mood. All right, I'm happy, and I want to hear really J Wan's best song. Go listen to Joyride. <laughs> Joyride. Okay, got it. Um, the last one. You at the crib? Your link just got comfortable. Now, I'm not telling you what y'all about to do. Y'all could be about to smoke. Y'all could be about to play rock, paper, scissors, like what anything. What the fuck you mean she just got comfortable? Like, she just got <laughs> it. You just got comfortable. Yeah, you about like, to smoke? You gotta get com- You supposed to smoke to get comfortable. No, 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 no. I mean, like, she just got in. She took off her coat. She maybe changed. I don't know what type of rapport y'all have. Like, this is your link, and she just got in. She just settled in. What are you playing? Girl, give me that pussy. <laughs> <I'm fucking with> <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine? I would literally ask the nigga, what are you trying to say? <laughs> what are you trying to say? No, what I'm are you playing. getting at here? I'm playing. I might play. I don't know, man. I don't listen to music in the house. No, okay. No, she's saying a record. Not period. any song, yeah. So you're not gonna play nothing for her. You gonna put on a, mu- a movie? Oh, nah, I think that's weird. Like niggas just be having YouTube. Are you not about to smoke? We're gonna watch a movie if we smoke. Why you Smoking can't? and music is in the is the is a car vibe. I so disagree. 
Mm-hmm. Well, that's you. Okay, well, what like, if the girl want to hear music? Play. Uh, she could plug up. Mm. That's trusting. Like, plug up. Okay. She probably going to play some Skiller, Baby, Rob 4-9 or something. Like, she going to turn it up. Might put on some R&B, some sad girl, some fucking mm. scissor or something, or some, like, Summer Walker. Like, it, I don't know. So, it really depends on the link. It depends on her. Yeah. Okay. Valentine's Day is coming up. Mm-hmm. Do you have Valentine's Day plans? No, nah, not. I got an idea what I want to do for Valentine's Day. Okay, with yourself or, like? Yeah. Go out. Go out. So y'all know what that means, ladies. I got the answer for y'all. She don't. We cutting this. <laughs> we cutting this. <laughs> we cutting this. <laughs> we cutting this. Okay, so Valentine's Day isn't the only thing coming up. Tell us what else you got coming up. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when it's dropped, but Smoke Diz is doing his 40th birthday and um, tape release. So I'm performing Ooh. with him on that. Wait. That's big. Yeah. You just said it like it's nothing. Are you excited? How you feeling? I might be nervous before I touch the stage. Mm-hmm. And then once I touch the stage, I'm good. Got new music coming out. I got two tapes coming out. Um, I got The Boy and Still Standing. No, I said Still Standing. Shout out to, who said that? Well, Monica, Still Standing, one of the R&B songs. The other one's called Still Adjusting. Mm. So, like, you feel me? I think that's going to come out before The Boy. And um, The Boy is so you. Yeah, it's just me. The like, boy. that's so you. So I was gonna be mad bragging and all of that on there, like just per use. Word, but still, still adjusting is gonna be like more so like speaking of like a change in scenery and life and shit like that. Like you feel me, and just people treating me different now versus like it's gonna be all of that. You feel like you feel the effects of fame now? Yeah, it just hit me the other day listening to Raw Wave. I was listening to Nostalgia. My son said, remember them small clouds. Do you feel like women treat you different now? Yeah. Hmm. But I've been a nigga who, like, women always threw themselves at. But now it's just like, it do be a bit much. Like, it's a little like, come on, like, relax. Like, relax. Guys gonna go crazy. Yeah, like, relax. (laughs) Like, what's up? Like, women are very, like, aggressive. It actually is like. Do you feel like that's for New York girls or everywhere? I feel like <laughs> women, y'all see what y'all want or think y'all want and just like scoundrels. <laughs> it never gave scoundrels. Yes. It never gave that. Yes. So you want to go after a woman. You don't want a woman to go after you. No. she got. I got to like her more than she like me. But I'm the catch. So you're going totally to you're gonna have to get me. You're going to have to go after me, but I have to like you more than you like me. It's the only way to work. And you think you're the catch in every situation? I'm always the catch. Always. Always. My thing is, though, I... And correct me if I'm wrong, my brother. I will. King. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that, you know, given your recent... You know, like, we see you growing. Success. Um, Success. Your recent success. You... The DMs haven't changed. Like, the caliber of women that's shooting their shot hasn't changed at all. I always... Up extra line. I ain't never. Mm. And you still feel like you're the catch. I'm always going to be the catch. I mean, I love the You want me to give you the but... reasons? These are the factors, right? Don't need to use your car. <laughs> I, I'm i sorry. That doesn't make you a catch. No, look. I'm about to give you. Because these niggas is bums. I don't need to use your car. I don't need $30 for an eighth while you at work. I'm not <laughs> laying around playing a video game while you out at work. I'm not sitting here. Nobody's calling me little bro. I'm not rolling up for nobody in the passenger seat. No I got my store. own motion. You feel mm-hmm. me? I run my own company. College educated. I don't need to live with you. Like, I'm the catch. Like, you feel me? And I'm very self-confident. Ain't nothing a girl could do that's going to break that in me. Like, if a girl cheated on me, it'd be like, well, that's, you feel me? That's your body. That's what you chose to do. That shit ain't going to affect how I feel about myself, like. I love that. But I will say the first half of your list was like, like it's not a plus that you're not those things. Like, no, it is. Because these niggas is bums. And if you put up with that, you're putting up with negatives. These women put up with bums. That's not who you're talking to, is it? No, I mean, you just told me you got a man. So? So I would hope that I, you would carry yourself nice. So I would assume your man is not a bum. He's not. Exactly. Right. But the rest of these women deal with bums. 
But, but they be bums but too. But that's not who you talking to. I'm talking to you being a catch to the women that you're talking to. No, yeah. this is what I'm saying though. The I'm bum so much, bitches that no, match I'm bum niggas catch. is not Look, it. I'm the catch. Upper echelon women try to be bottom barrel women, <laughs> mid tier. Like they all gonna shoot their shot. Like okay. like women got no shame. Like yeah. we need to bring that back. Men have shame. Niggas know what's out of their league. Some niggas be shooting. But some niggas be shooting. He'll be like, yo, what are you doing? Heavy on that. You feel me? Heavy on that. But for the women really be women really be trying. Like, if I showed you my DMs, you'll be like, wait, what? Like, it, like You know why I think that is? I think because men are easier than women. Why do y'all think that? Because y'all are. Who? What? I think it's way easier for a woman to fuck a man out of her league than it is for a man to fuck a woman out of his league. No, I'm going to tell y'all what this is. This free game for the women. Y'all are not out of nobody's league. Like, you feel me? Like, y'all are not out of nobody's league. Like, like these what? niggas be out of their league. Like, you feel me? And I'm about to give you proof. Okay. These rap niggas, right? right? Before when rappers used to pay chicks off, it was hush money and not to let nobody know they was fucking them. Excuse me. Now niggas is paying to fuck. Niggas is taking chicks on shopping sprees that they know nothing about to fuck. Like, you feel me? Like, nigga don't got no, he ain't got no wordplay. Nigga don't know how to just make a, like, and then they be mad when the little bro in the entourage got all of the bitches' attentions, because he's talking to them, like, he knows how to still talk to women. He's not out of touch of reality. These niggas, like, women, y'all are not out of nobody league. These niggas be out of y'all league, out of they own league, and they just be, you feel me? Because if it wasn't the case, why the fuck all these niggas paying 20? Like, I know rap niggas that is paying women to fuck. And my man, I ain't gonna put his name out there because you feel me? He heavy out there. He ain't doing that. And those bitches that these niggas is paying is pulling up on him, cashing out on him just because he know how to talk to women, make them laugh. So like, you're saying that women. It's falling for a conversation. That's what I'm thinking. No, wait. No, 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 no. You're saying. Too many women leading, too many niggas is leading with money and women are manu- moving with box. That was a bar. That was a bar. They not valuing the women not valuing the pussy no more, and the niggas is just they Wait, not even. I think women value their. They vagina. not women are not. You feel me? Not all women, but these Instagram type bitches, these influencer type vibes, are leading with the box because the niggas are leading with the money. They know what he like. So you, who's no, supposed to change first? Huh? Who's supposed to change first? I'm about to keep going. I'm, I'm just giving the women game, right? Hands the women are leading with the box because the niggas are leading with the money. Okay. None of these women is saying, all right, you came and bought me this. You're still not getting no pussy. Who is none? None of them. I so I'm going to tell you how I know. Like, I know bitches that are like that. That's in round industry, niggas? Yes. Because the ones we see that all the bitches is following and niggas going crazy over is being fucked. They being fucked. They are being fucked. And then it's a select few niggas. I ain't going to say nobody names. That ain't doing that. And they falling for them niggas harder. And you got these niggas mad because it's like, yo, I just had to do all of that. And it's yo, bro, it ain't that. It's, you just a weirdo. You left with the money. She gave you, it's transactional. She gave you what you wanted. Definitely transactional. Now, these right. niggas about to fuck with her head and toy with her emotions. Like, you feel me? Y'all, I really wish we had more time to get into gender wars. We do. We, we got to have you back so we can get into gender we wars. We could get into gender wars. What you said, who's the change? What you said? It's no, it's, it's, it's going it's to have to be an equal. Like, you feel me? That's why I'm rapping for the niggas who don't got to do shit like that. Equal. No, look. I'm about to put you on. Now, just for the niggas. You go up to a young lady and know how to I speak. Also, now, if you go up to a young lady and you know how to speak and you just carry yourself... You will get more. You you can you have more options. You the ball is in your court versus these niggas. Think about it. Look at it. Look. You don't think that's on the type of no girl that the niggas talking nope. to. Nope. Look at this. Look at sections. Right. Look at when you go to the club and you look at sections. Got mm-hmm. the rapper standing on top of the shit. Right. So he ain't about to walk down. And then when he do try to walk, security is on his shoulders. Okay. Everybody's watching him. He's sending the little nigga in his team or his manager or somebody 
to go talk to them. You have to still know how to talk. Even telling them, like, example, if I was to have Dada or somebody <clears throat> go get a girl for me, they have to be like, yo, like, you can't just go over, yo, he wants you. Nah, like, yo, like, how you doing? Like, you feel me? Jay Wan want to know if you want to come. Like, niggas don't know how to, these niggas don't, now the chicks know the nigga don't know. And they ain't even saying nothing to the chicks in the session, in the section, because they don't want the cameras to capture them. So she just over there drinking all the 42, all the rose, <laughs> smoking all the hookah. You ain't said nothing to her. By the time y'all leave, now y'all in the car, y'all talking, everybody all drunk. It's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Y'all at the room, she know what she here for. You know what she here for. In the morning, you probably, if you got the flight out of there, she wish me call it. You leaving her there, you leaving 2000 whatever you leaving on the dresser for her to have, mm -hmm. boom, and you out. Or oh, if you're not doing none of that and you in the city a little longer, niggas is taking them on shopping sprees, taking them out to eat. These niggas ain't said nothing. When did you say something to her? Okay, so in that scenario, is the woman out of the man's league or the man is out the woman's league? I just said the man be out. I just said these niggas be out of the women's league. Yeah, but you said... No, but... No, you was, said men don't be out the women's league. Men be out the men's no, league. No, I said these women are not out of nobody's league. I mean, I guess. I think there's everybody for somebody. I just... Ugh, y'all, we're gonna bring him back for gender wars. We gotta bring him back for gender wars, okay? So tell the people where they could find you, really J1. You can find me on Instagram at really J1. You can find me on Twitter at J1 or Nug. J A E W O N or N U G G. Cause somebody stole really J1 on Twitter. Oh, wow. When I catch you, it's lit. And when I catch you, Ricky. When I catch you, Ricky. Ooh, when I catch you, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, word. Period. Fucking. All right. Well, that is really J1. I am Lauren K. Talk of the town. And we're out.